Welcome back to the Top-Down RPG Template Tutorial Series. In our previous video, we covered how to customize text for the chat. In today's video, we'll be discussing how to proceed through quest steps and receive rewards for them. Let's dive in. To start, we'll need to create a new data table using the structure provided in the documentation. After that, we can replace the existing data table in the corresponding composite data table with our new one. It's important to ensure that the row name and ID are the same. We can then write a name and description for the quest that will appear on the quest dialog. We'll cover the rewards and quest completed event at the end of the video. We can also add other quest IDs to lock this one until they are completed. Our first step is about talking to an NPC. We'll need to write a unique ID for the quest step and set the description. Since there are no requirements for this step, we'll leave the rest as is. Since this step is related to an NPC, we'll need to add the quest ID and step ID to this NPC on the interactable data table. Additionally, the NPC has a separate data table for its dialogues that can be utilized to display quest-related dialogues. We can add a new row in that data table and set the row name to the quest step ID, then enter the dialogue we want this NPC to display. Don't forget to add the quest to the quest controller in the level. When we place the NPC in the level and test it out, we should be able to see the quest icon over the NPC, as well as a minimap icon. When we talk to the NPC, we should see the dialogue we wrote in the data table. Since this is the only step in our quest, when we complete it, we complete the whole quest. Now let's add another step that requires us to change zones. In this case, we need to add the quest ID and step ID to the zone data table. After talking to the NPC, we should see the second step, which tells us to go to another zone. 
Changing the zone should complete the quest. We can also change the mini-map icon location for the zone. Note that we don't have any requirements for the second step, which means players can start directly from this step. Finally, let's add another step about opening a chest. We'll create a new chest interactable by duplicating the one we have. Then, we'll add the same chest to the chest data table. And make sure it drops the magic stone item. After placing the chest blueprint in the level and setting its ID from the details panel, we'll add the quest-related data to that chest in the interactable data table. Our next step is about picking up the magic stone item. To achieve this, we will add the quest-related data to the item in the quest items data table. Once we have done this, we can test our progress again. If everything works correctly, we should be able to talk to the NPC, change zones, open the chest, and pick up the quest item to complete the quest. Now let's add another step to the quest. We will need to return the item to the NPC this time. However, we don't want players to start from this step, so we will add the previous step and the quest item ID as requirements. We can then add the quest data to the NPC and write a dialog for this step on the dialog data table. Let's test it again. We should find that talking to the NPC twice won't complete the quest, as we have added some requirements for the last step. However, if we have the quest item, we should be able to talk to the NPC again and complete the quest.
Now let's continue adding more steps to our quest. In this step, we will spawn an enemy and kill it. We need to make sure that this happens only after we have returned the quest item. We will spawn an enemy only when the player is in this step. To do this, we will need to create a blueprint using Quest Step Event Base as the parent class. We can then override the On Quest Step Activated event and spawn any enemy we want. However, we need to create the enemy first. We can duplicate the skeleton and change its ID. And then add the quest-related data to it. We also need to provide a spawn location for the enemy. and set the quest step event we just created on the quest data table. Next, we will add another step to talk to the NPC for the last time to receive rewards. We will add the quest data to the NPC and provide a dialogue for this quest step. To create quest rewards, we can use the Quest Reward Base Blueprint as the parent class. We can set the exp and item rewards from the details panel. To ensure that rewards are dropped around the NPC, we need to override get drop actor and provide the NPC as the actor for the function. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will override the Distribute Rewards event and unlock the second act for our player.
We can also create a quest completed event that runs when any player completes this event, or if any player that completed this event before joins the server. Before we test everything again, let's make sure that our quest enemy spawns a blueprint with the correct ID. Let's test everything by starting a new game from the main menu. To summarize the steps involved in completing the quest, here they are. Step 1. Talk to NPC. Step 2. Go to Danger Zone. Step 3. Open the chest. Step 4. Pick up the quest item. Step 5. Return to the NPC. Step 6. Kill the monster. Step 7. Talk to NPC again. If we have followed all the steps correctly, we should be able to see the rewards we have set for quest completion. If we save and exit, we should also be able to play Act 2. Thanks for watching.